Hello, um, my name is Jay Paffer and I'm very grateful to Dominique and Julie for inviting me to, to do this lecture. Um, and I'll get started. Um, acts of transgression is my topic. Uh, it comes from a, the title of a book that um, I've co-edited with Catherine Ball called um, Acts of Transgression, Live Art in South Africa. Uh, I've subtitled this talk um, live art, its context of velocity, extremity, and crisis. And um, essentially, it is around live art from the African continent, but I'm focusing on South Africa. Um, the lecture then, I was meant to talk a little bit about curation, but I'm going to um, reserve that for another time and focus largely on the context of velocity, turbulence and crisis that have generated these acts of transgression, as well as some central ideas that come through with a collection of works such as the body as uh, central, um, the body as a repository of memory, the, the archive, the, the, the fragile archive, especially around the, in the African continent that many live artists refer to, um, a, a spillage of emotion that has, a, has a risen, which I shall talk about with more greater detail. Um, and then works of, um, that have emerged that have uh, uh, ideas around absurdity. Uh, a kind of impotence, but also working through through uh, uh, um, comedy and uh, a notion of absurdity to to transfer the the levels of crisis that various artists um, confront, um, and then other some a few smaller uh, features of of work that comes from this uh, region. So I, I want to begin with uh, the, the uh, 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 a production by um, Jalili Atik, um, widely known as the father of contemporary African dance, uh, sorry, contemporary performance on the African continent. And he created this performance uh, last year for for the Live Art Network Africa conference. The School of Governance. All right, in other news, shoppers in the Cape Town city centre had a famous visitor this afternoon, US President Donald Trump. Okay, it was only an effigy. It was erected as the Institute of Creative Arts protested against his alleged comment using a derogatory term labelling Africa and Haiti as, uh, let's say, unpleasant places. A statue of Donald Trump dressed in a black coat in the Cape Town heat, internationally acclaimed Nigerian artist in his lone and silent performance, Jalili Atiku spat at the statue. It was whipped with a shambok, kicked and shouted at. A symbolism of the alleged comments made by Trump, Atiku says Trump dehumanized the people. For him to utter such statement, it is a calculated attempt. It is not just by joke. So if it, it, it just like you look at, he's trying to attack Obama first, being coming from the black body, and trying to uh, uh, rubbish all things that Obama has done. But he need to attack where Obama is coming from. Obama is black. So for attack for uh, attacking the black uh, body of the continent is an attempt to de is degrading. So I am degraded and I feel humiliated, so it is from point of humiliation that I did the performance. People of Cape Town say Trump should be vilified for his comments. Donald Trump said African countries is shit hole, but I think it's, it's, not, uh, it's not true. It's about art, it's about politics, but it's about also how we as Africans see ourselves and that we can't remain silent when we have this kind of violence. Some in the audience also had a message for the American president. Wow, God, what can I say about Trump? I think he's a shithole himself. <laughs> should actually kick it back to himself. He's a shithole. He's the one bringing shitholes to us. They should take that shithole and back to, you know. <laughs> it was last month in a meeting of lawmakers on immigration that Trump was reported to have called African nations and Haiti shithole countries sparking worldwide outrage the school of governance so um, besides this um, derogatory statement that trump conceived of the entire 
um, also conceived the entire African continent as a country, which of course um, um, Jalil Yatiku uh, probes. And he does this in a really, uh, um, you know, highly ritualized form. He created um, a, the, um, a stack of A4 pages on which he wrote, um, he inscribed uh, the, the, the hundreds of uh, pre-colonial empires that existed um, in the in various parts of the continent and handed these out to the um, to the audience members to read aloud to 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 Donald Trump's effigy, underlining also how vast the continent and how rich the cultures were and are. But of course, the the you know the the the, the major issue here, of course, to to point to is that before we talk anything African, then just useful to note how large the the continent actually is. Um, that you can fit the United States, China, India, Western Europe, uh, a large part of Eastern Europe, uh, Japan, and Great Britain in the entire continent, and and I think it is uh, it is it just helps us to temper what our sense of um, of of any kind of performance coming from the continent because well, you know one has to understand the the variances uh, from with with work that might emerge from Morocco or work that might emerge from South Africa or work that might emerge from Nigeria. But the, the important thing is though that social velocity does characterize many of these contemporary societies uh, and um, in, uh, in, in Africa because we deal so much with the continued turbulence and the aftershocks of colonialism, and the erasure of African civilizations of the past and the colonial residue that remains in structures of modernity and the colonial violence and intergenerational trauma that remains in our bodies and psyches. And these disturbances have pro produced some of the world's most vivid performance artists and I want to just show you um, a, 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 it's a, a, a collage of work from the ICA Live Art Festival.
So those were images from the ICA's uh, Live Art Festival in 2012, which was the first uh, of its kind and uh, has continued until today. Uh, in 2014, um, when audiences moved into the Cape Town City Hall, which is normally the venue for the Cape Philharmonic Orchestra, they were met with a room filled with uh, Calda, the setting of Guma Sapotela's In Kukui Beke Ikanda. Sapotela's series of ritualized acts included writing Nkandla on the wall in Dang in reference to the then, then President Zuma's private residence, which was revealed earlier that year to have been lavishly renovated. Um, using public funds. In the course of the performance, Sapotella removed the South African flag from her vagina. And in another room, uh, we had um, Unmute uh, uh, by An Andila Vellum. And in another uh, space on the other side of the campus, Iksham Adams's Bismillah, uh, Tiboko Munia's um, The uh, Doors of Gold unfolded in an adjoining room with a naked male body was foregrounded as the trope for the acute vulnerability uh, and evocation of uh, the Marikana massacre and of the displacement and erasure of black men who have died in South, South Africa's mines without record or ceremony. And in yet another room, Limelight on Rights by dance and choreographer Sela Pesa, it featured two dancers performing alongside a coffin and tossing dead animal torsos into the air while pitching funeral plans to audience members, similarly highlighting the black body as an expendable commodity for barter and trade, even in death. These sometimes opaque, sometimes stark gestures and the many that preceded and followed in the festival program seem to search for a different language, uh, uh, of then that had gone before, a corporeal vocabulary of seepage, excess and incoherence almost, to articulate the, the distension of the time. They cited the failure of systems of communication, a kind of linguistic breakdown in the face of an abundance of raw emotion. They performed states of despair and protest, attack and response against an overwhelming onslaught on the South African psyche by continued economic and psychic oppression. Only six months la uh, later, after the festival, of course, uh, Tumani Matoila uh, flung excrement at the statue of Cecil John Rhodes on the University of Cape Town's upper campus in a searing physical manifestation of emotional overflow. Dressed in black tights and a bright pink hard hat with a placard that read Exhibit White Arrogance at UCT, Matoela's striking intervention, as deliberate and crafted as the performance, cut through layers of obfuscation around institutional race, racism to give voice to an irrepressible anger and impatience at the slow pace of change in a supposedly post-colonial country. This action and the subsequent Rhodes Must Fall movement to which it gave rise tapped into expanses of feeling whose release once triggered could not be contained. Emotion spilled out beyond the confines of rational response and ruptured attempts now synonymous with South Africa's transitional reconciliation era to neutralize expressions of pain and silent uh, outpourings of anger. The movement was a backlash against the tyranny of language and logic, the imperative to put into words when talking had proven ineffectual and compromised the cover for a regime of forgetting. Significantly then, the movement as well as its subsequent fallist iterations as they have become to be known, was precipitated and propelled by this upwelling of feeling. Searching, passionate, seemingly nihilistic, yet holding on to the imperative to give form, shape, and articulation, the works that have emerged are both frustrating and satisfying in turn. In the wake of so much misinformation, invisibility, and erasing of history, artists turn their unceasing attention to the truth of the representation using whatever forms, whatever media, to address the complexity of this change. In its place, an invitation to touch the inevitable through a mixture of unexpected disruption of narrative, deeply subjective opacity, and blindingly illuminating image. A cocktail in um, the, 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 the performance artist Fast and Linukula's own words of truth and poetry. And here are scenes now of um, the 2014 Live Art Festival. As we live in today. 
So many people are used to black bodies performing. Um, why can't black bodies be silent? <laughs> what I hope becomes apparent um, in this talk is that black female artists or black feminist artists, scholars, and the so-called organic intellectuals have long known the power of the margin. The margin knows itself and the center, perhaps better than the center knows itself, a fact of our survival strategies. As I don't know, and it tends to show the distinction and people find it disruptive or disturbing or whatever it is, but what it is actually trying to do or attempting to do the minor sense of anything is to form the bridge, to form the link between this irrationality and these disparate ways in which so-called rational society operates. Um, I'm going to uh, just stop the video then and move on to um, a, just a, a, another kind of an analysis. Yeah, today. Yeah. Um, uh, and just to say that that um, that was the 2016 um, Live Art Festival, no, not the 2014. Um, I um, just give you a sense that I'm still here. Um, I, I'm going to just spend the rest of the talk, um, the, the lecture, uh, just focusing on, because the, the, you know, the issues are, as you can see in the wealth of work that, have, that has emerged in this period, that there are, I would just like to focus on some, some key issues around the body and the body as a repository of memory, around archive uh, and the reaching for the anarchive. Um, issues of absurdity, as I've mentioned earlier, and the assertion of presence. Um, and I think it's, you know, just to, to the slide that you are looking at now, um, it comes from the, the Roads Must Fall movement. And during, during the, the course of the, of the, um, of the, 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 the time of the, of the, uh, of the, of the protest, another profound symbol emerged at the height of the protest, the white human shield. Student protests at historically black universities, despite being largely under the radar, came into prominence at historically white universities. Initiated by a predominantly black group of students, the marches, demonstrations, and sit-ins quickly attracted white students. When police responded with brutality, white students were ushered to the front of the group. This was meant to be a kind of a buffer. Uh, just there's another slide of it, a clearer one. Uh, this was meant to be a kind of a buffer between the police and the black student body to stop police from using violence to disperse the large group of students and to quell the protest. This proved to be a successful strategy for the most part and became known as the white human shield. It was both a poetic and tragic performance of the, of the black body. Um, it's also to, to understand this response to the extremities uh, of spillage and overflow um, in a failed democracy and the, the failure to provide security for the black body um, and expressed as interruption and overflow. And I propose this as a consequence of an almost Kantian pro project of reason and restraint that has characterized a great deal of work on the body, memory and heritage over the past 25 years. Um, I think I, the, 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 the other point I want to make in relationship to the body is the, the writing of Duke University's Sarah Lincoln, 
uh, which is instructive and, and she encompasses ideas around waste and overflow into analysis of post-colonial African literatures such as Saini Kweyama, Ben Onkri and Ngugi Wationg. Reading these authors against Africa's continued status as a remnant of globalization, a waste product, a trash heap of disposable raw material and degraded offcut of the processes that have so greatly enriched, dignified and beautified their beneficiaries in that I'm quoting directly from Lincoln. Um, so the, 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 the foregrounding and together with this, the symbol of the white shield uh, makes me uh, want us to, to just consider an incident that happened um, at the, in South Africa at a South African gallery. Um, it, it was an exhibition entitled Exhibit the Thief uh, Two by Brett Murray, a white South African artist. Uh, who exhibited the work called The Spear at the Goodman Gallery, um, a high-profile contemporary art gallery in Johannesburg. In the painting, the uh, ex-president, President Jacob Zuma's face is inserted on what resembles um, the classic uh, Victor Ivanov poster entitled Lenin Lived, Lenin is Alive, Lenin Will Live. Now, President Zuma and the African National Congress, the ruling party of South Africa, issued an application to the courts in which they stated that the painting had caused the president much personal injury and the work had to be removed. And then this happened. The controversial painting of uh, President Jacob Zuma has in fact been defaced. We have exclusive visuals here on the E! News Channel. Here it is, uh, first time that we are now seeing these two, uh, these two people defacing uh, the uh, picture known as the spear. You can see my colleague Iman Repetti in the background. She witnessed the event firsthand. That was the first set of paint to go on to uh, try and destroy uh, this particular painting. There is just one of the uh, gentlemen involved. He's now been apprehended by the police. Uh, here is the second. Uh, now also using it, uh, using black paint uh, to deface uh, the painting at the Goodman Gallery. These are the first visuals we have from inside the gallery. You can see some security uh, detaining him there as well. Iman Repetti was there. We're actually seeing one of the security guards uh, now trying to detain uh, this young man. Police, uh, South African police services are in fact uh, on their way. These are new visuals we actually received a second ago. Uh, the curator of the Goodman Gallery has now come out to say that it looks like it's oil-based paint that is in fact being used uh, and is impossible, according to the curator, to uh, try and remove without damaging uh, the original, uh, rather heavy-handed uh, action there by the uh, security at the Goodman Gallery to try and restrain uh, this young man. He is just one of two uh, that went on to uh, deface uh, the image by Brett Murray, known as the spear. It has been hanging in uh, the uh, Goodman Gallery for the past few weeks. It has uh, certainly been at the uh, center of uh, much controversy over the past few days. There is Iman Repetti, E! News senior anchor, also the host of Morning News today. She is speaking to uh, the first person to go in and uh, deface the image, the man. So, um, um, you, you know, it, it kind of looks like a performance, but it isn't, it's uh, uh, real. And um, uh, some pure Dana, uh, uh, a singer and uh, composer and cultural activist uh, said, um, uh, wrote this in the, in, in the newspaper, um, yes, Zuma is the worst president and he has set back the feminist movement, but we can't sacrifice one struggle for another. People are angry at Brett Murray, are daring to think that he, as a white man, a descendant of an oppressive regime, the cause of our dehumanization is a right to depict us in a dehumanizing manner under the guise of free speech. This shifted something in me, an animalistic howl died in my throat, perhaps a gene memory flashback coupled with the reality of my existence today. It felt like giving birth to death, like this new South Africa is still born. This hurt is deep. Ashilam Bember, cultural theorist, wrote, the controversy surrounding the exhibition of President Jacob Zuma's private parts has released high levels of toxic energy. What Artist Brett Murray has done is like sticking a needle in the heart of a figurine. What has irked many is not the desecration of President Zuma's genitals as such, what has irked many is the fact that the black body is still a profane body. It still does not enjoy the immunity accorded to properly human bodies. So almost immediately thereafter, public response to the attack and to the artwork itself expressed both 
con condemnation and support erupted and the height of which was yet the, the lawyer uh, for Jacob Zuma burst into tears and it, it began to be quite, um, quite, um, uh, quite a powerful upsurge of emotion. So the, the desecration of a painting exposing the penis of a black man, the president by a white artist inside a white owned gallery, becomes this performative gesture, quintessentially South African moment, when the surface of reconciliation and the sheen of normality are forced to give way to probing questions about art, ownership, the body, culture, and race. And specifically around the fact that this happens in this seemingly innocuous middle class gallery space dedicated to contemporary art and becoming a symbol of oppression for the largely working class, a heady performance of the racialized body in several manifestations. So uh, this incident then, um, um, this, this uh, um, uh, um, a microcosm, it forms a microcosm of forms of subjugation inscribed in the black body and it needs to be viewed in a wider context. It should be viewed, for example, against the backdrop of the Marikana massacre in South Africa, um, where 34 black miners were shot and killed while protesting for a living wage 22 years into our democracy, and also in relation to the contemporary killings of black men by white policemen across the United States and against the disproportionately high rates of incarceration of black men in the United States in the middle of COVID-19, uh, we're understanding the high levels of deaths uh, of black people, even in, uh, in a virus that seems to be affecting all members of the world. Um, all, all members of the of, of the globe. So each of these moments um, uh, starts to starts to develop the body and the black body in particular and blackness with crisis. And um, many artists on the continent, of course, take this on. I want to just point again to Jelili Atik, who's come let me clutch the clutch the that explores the persistence of um, oil spillage in the African continent, especially in the Niger Delta region, and its unprecedented impacts on ecosystem stability, high diversity, and food security. Using his body as the continent, a bride to Western interests, played um, by a dancer in a white suit and a hard hat, Atiku goes straight to the heart of the matter. Um, Kudus Onikeku, the choreographer from Lagos, um, has created this work, uh, Europa, around the body and migration. For adults from Mali. Found dead on the side of Highway from Kalas. Salik Four from Senegal. Thirty-two man from Egypt killed.
increasingly um, South African artists are inv evoking a black body without uh, coherence. Black body without coherence, without it, reminiscent of the responses to fascism by early European artists in the early 20th century amongst the third artists who became later with the third artist as its own um, um, uh, choreography. Taguana's work is frequently characterized by the non sequitur and the combination of slapstick comedy with violent imagery, philosophical text, and a stripped bare contemporary dance language. And this, uh, in case of fire run for the elevator, tells the story of food and its intricate, uneven, and invisible poetics, and is a scathing uh, attack on the regime and its inability to provide um, uh, nutrition, food uh, for uh, in a society that is. Um, now the most unequal society in the world. Um, in complicated um, art form for dummies, a performer in town of failure appropriates a white alter ego, Bianca White, to explore issues of power and prejudice. Afro Vibes. <laughs> Do you know that Afro Vibes is one of the only festivals in the Netherlands that realizes that blacks are not the only ones who live in Africa. We whites are also African. I am a quarter Zulu. I'm a fifth Khoi Khoi and I'm a third generation Afrikaans Macy. And Bianca White. We try to teach these young people that help themselves, I've already told you. Because I mean, blacks by the, I mean foreigners in general, they have no idea of all the dangers that lurk in Europe. You know, a little something that I always say to my kids is, why don't sharks eat blacks? <laughs> because they think blacks are whale shit. Sambiwadena's description of her response to the spear as a genre, as a gene, sorry, memory flashback, and Mbemba's comment that the image of the black body is profane, this is, leads me to an examination of memory. Memory. Um, the holders of South Africa's wealth and land remain largely unchanged since apartheid. There is an alarming disparity between the wealthiest and poorest sectors of the population. The number of people living on the poverty line has barely changed since apartheid. 
Greg Nicholson writing the Daily Maverick surmises that 54% of people fall under the widest definitions of poverty in South Africa, surviving on around about 40, 50 euros uh, a month. <clears throat> in South Africa then, the act of recalling the violent past immediately and directly invokes the present. The lack of substantial change in our material circumstances demands a perpetual resurrection of what went before. The act of remembering in South Africa is very much an obsession not with the past, but with the present. In their seminal article, Symbolic Closure Through Memory, Reparation and Revenge in Post-Conflict Societies, psychologist Brandon Hamber and anthropologist Richard Wilson observe that the nation-building discourse of truth commissions homogenized disparate individual memories to create an official version. And in so doing, they repress other forms of psychological closure motivated by less ennobled, although no less real, emotions of anger and vengeance, claims to heal the collective unconscious or the nation, therefore mask how truth commissions both lift an authoritarian regime of denial and public silence, as well as create a new regime of forgetting, which represses other memories and forms of psychological closure. Anthony Bunks is also concerned with the role of memory in the performance of the black body in dominant discourse, characterizing the black body as a disposable but required thing, a notion he derives from Césaire, of course, in an address at the South Bank Center. Bogues spoke about recalling the black body as a source of fright and therefore one that is in need of tutelage to be disciplined and subjected. He contended that the brazen objectif objectification and silencing of black bodies in the Maracana massacre was precisely about putting an end to fright. The same, of course, might be said to of the fatal shootings of black men by white American policemen, invoking Foucault's uh, knowledge of the archaeology sorry Foucault's notions of the archaeology of knowledge material traces left behind and memory that grapples with us folks asked us to turn our attention away from the object of our gaze to the archaeology of the gaze to excavate what is it that frightens one or what is it that one remembers Accepting that violence can create somatic trauma, where in Bogue's words, memory is nothing more than fleeting images, the percussion of bones, sounds, and movements of the body, disconnected cacophonous, I'm quoting directly from Bogue's. At the ICA's uh, live art festival, uh, Thomas Sopatella, the performance artist presented in Kunku Ibeke Anda, who is something I referred to earlier, performance I referred to earlier. A work demonstrates an approach to the body that was formal and structural, as well as visceral. Set phases and clear spatial demarcations of the performing area created a taut vehicle for a largely improvised performance. And what Puma does is takes us into the, um, the, the act of being inside of the memory cycle and not presenting it. Uh, or not representing it. And if you give me a second, I just want to share my screen so that uh, we can have a look. The work was so much enduring performing, and the performer realized that the performer has realized the ability of meditation. It's kind of mean to create a new memory. As a result, the repetition memories are triggered, which in turn becomes partly the ability of the repetition performance. 
but even in a very positive memory, um, anxious to be So um, many artists are preoccupied with this search for continuity in these um, in what when memory presents itself as a, as a, as interrupted as decimated as destroyed um, as as bringing together uh, these parts and these fragments. Um, and to quote Fastali Nicola again, in the Netherlands, as in France, Belgium, etc., I hear people talking about colonialism as a black page in history, but it is not a page at all because you can turn a page. It is not a page, but a line that runs through history, that runs through me. Foregrounding this, Celo Pesso, in, in collaboration with visual artist uh, Vaughan Sadie, created a moving work at the Presswich Memorial called Teka Monika, meaning to give and take in Sisutu. The history of the memorial is layered and fraught, and um, uh, you can see it in the background behind the, the dancer who's having his hair braided. Um, during an attempt at constructing upscale apartment blocks, many skeletons were uncovered that were found to to be unmarked graves of slaves killed by Dutch settlers in the 17th and 18th century. So the bones of the 2,500 graves were exhumed and a decision taken to create this memorial building and park, which includes an ossuary, a place where bones are stored. And that's the building you see behind. However, in front of the memorial is a coffee shop, which sells an exclusive brand of coffee called Truth. The coffee shop is frequented by the main American and European young tourists because of its Wi-Fi access and good Java. Olelva Kashe Katia, Deputy Director of the Archival Platform, writes very significantly, ordinary South Africans drive or walk past the memorial without understanding what the true meaning of this conspicuous structure is. Those who do understand the meaning tend to not know that human remains are indeed housed with the structure. So drawing from this ironical in limbo state of affairs between commercial venture and sacred memorial, Pesa and Sadie create a subtle work which involves three performers committing the most inane acts such as hairdressing. And in the previous image, uh, people having uh, one of the artists had a picnic and then another one having a barbecue in and around the site. The combination of elements, the public space, the memorial, the presence of the remains of slaves in the vicinity, the wafting smells of burned flesh from the barbecued remains of the freshly slaughtered sheep, as well as the slowly festering performances that implied a perpetually disaffected witnessing. These inane acts were an uncompromising indictment of a society that has submerged and obfuscated access to its contentious past. The combination of an existential meaningless in performance style with the uber narrative of the unattended to history of Cape Town, a history which many wish would quietly go away, was disturbing as well as numbing at the same time. And this has been crucial in many artists, this reaching back, but all, uh, reaching back in, in irony. South African choreographer Melissa Faber considered the subject of African human zoos in Europe. Sorry, that's from Teka Munyeka. Um, Nelly Faber's work, uh, which considers human zoos in Europe um, and which consider, 
continued as recently as 1958. Uh, South African Sarah Bartman was captured and paraded in Europe in the, 19, in the 1800s and whose remains were in Paris right until 2006 when Nelson Mandela asked for them to be returned so she could have a proper burial is her subject. Kwaba draws his connection between Sarah Bartman and continuities between then and now, the exoticizing of black bodies and hazards of migration as an African woman performing in, uh, in Europe. <laughs> Takes us further in Sarkozy says. is um, Laurent Mahuku uh, in Congo and his work in Sapoto. <laughs> Jackson's work, Lilith. Um, Please read the paper, follow the instructions. You will get a pen here and you can uh, write it on the wall there. Thank you. So, little income in the bottom.
get it incorrect and um it becomes uh, in performance of course is that uh, and there's this uh, there's this need to go inside to see bernard but there are numerous uh, other phases inside um what he does to um which one gets a sense of um throughout throughout the work is that there, there are various stages of it and of course just a few people manage to get in and finally get to be in his uh, in his presence but um i'm going to see it's possible to show this in another part of the video that even the, at some parts of this passageway this labyrinth to get in you do have a video uh, uh, showing an angle of what is actually happening inside. So you, there is this desire to get in to actually experience this live and you, this um, constant replication of uh, and surge of humanity's needs to get through in order to get to something. And, uh, and a lot of this is, of course, a lot about failure. Um, Another artist that works in uh, with silence and with the uh, upending audience's expectations is Gabrielle Goliath. She um, she's known known for several um, endurance works, uh, but also works that that are highly highly considered and involves just one or two interventions um, that. Uh, play with this visibility and invisibility of the actual performance. Um, here she's lying um, as a stumbling block wrapped up in a South African blanket uh, at an art gallery opening and, um, and she's uh, compiled these images to create this, uh, this critique uh, of um, of art, of art making in this kind of, in this context of crisis and velocity and abjection. Um, many artists have, um, like Ati Pataruga, uh, they work with different spatial contexts. This is inside a shop window, um, and the, where the work um, happens as a as happenstance, uh, and um, and in, inserts uh, art making critique in a in an extremely invisible and highly considered way. Uh, inside um, these spaces of um, polarity. Ultimately, the works are about finding presence and about developing um, uh, uh, developing language. This is the the inimitable uh, Nora Chipamari. I'll just play her work as a as a as a way to to understand this need to to develop presence. Superhero. The question is how to become a superhero. African 
super hero. A black African super hero. A black African man, woman, super hero. Yale is yale, yale is yale. When I'm in Bote, 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 me, Angola, 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 Nabiso, 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 Angola, 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 Step one. Learn to swag like a black African man, woman, superhero. Step two, you make it look natural or oh, natural. Natural ma bo. Not like the whole township transgressing griot dictator type thing. Step three. Um, and that was uh, Nora Chim uh, Chipamare from Zimbabwe, and um, uh, this is um, um, a work she made specifically for for video, of course. Um, but uh, her work, um, a, a punk, um, and, and various other works that um, that has happened in the past uh, couple of years have been about the assertion of presence, about um, adaptation, about about uh, about living uh, in spite of uh, the the attacks on the body, and the ultimately this goal to find presence and affirmation of living that faces so much possible negation is something that's quite important to 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 think about uh, for us as we as we move and um, into um, into. Uh, greater and other kinds of emergencies that are happening right now. Um, let us just stop the share here and so uh, I've uh, wanted to I want to conclude there and say that um, I, I want to adapt a, a conclusion that I have from an article I wrote in Laws of Recall um, that in this time as we navigate COVID-19, I don't need to be an African artist to assert that our search for certainties is only human, be it an existential affliction, a sociopolitical necessity, or a human right. Yet the essential velocity and unpredictability of the body, memory, and incomplete democratic processes, together with the imperative to remember, presents particular challenges to the live artists on the African continent and uh, specifically in South Africa, how are we to make that conundrum manifest? The recourse to coloniality, the past and memory, is a necessity and a scam, a seduction and a disappointment. In much of this work, neat solutions and tied up endings seem vacuous. In these moments when present and past connect, collapsing time, it seems appropriate to just be full of spillage of emotion of rage, to hold as an image strong and uncompromising that the, the idea that this non sequitur, this lack of cohesion, is what we have, all we have. In Atiku's work, Sopatilla and many of the live artists featured in the books are uh, acts of transgression as well as in the live art festivals, this distension is ultimately its enduring, if painful, life force and energy field. In the, shatter, in the stuttering and shattering evocation of these memories, there's none of the promised release. There is merely an affirmation of a troubled present and an uncertain and probing future. And yet the compulsion to remember and to explain remains. Can performance do more than reflect this open-ended, insatiable compulsion? 
In South Africa, apartheid sits firmly in each moment that one is, 25 years into our democracy. I remember it clearly, not because I want to or I'm obsessed with the past, it is because the persistence of poverty and an unabated rage remains as viscous and as visceral as ever. The denial of this has made the festering wound to turn its color and shift its form from a space of vulnerability and compromise to a space of sudden attack and unpredictable virulence born of neglect. My conclusion then is an abiding question to myself. What are the mechanisms inherent in performance that could possibly fill these spaces and silences and memory with their confounding schizophrenic lack of spatial or temporal demarcations, their chaos and messiness, without the neat project of reconciliation or the imperatives of healing or finding a solution? How can performance as interactive, social, collaborative and experiential mechanisms make material submerged processes and initiate fault lines, making manifest that which for many of us remains a deeply lodged, unnameable, unarticulated and unwitnessed ache? Thank you very much and thank you very much for listening.